Good morning. Welcome to the AFCIA Greater Augusta Small Business Workshop. How can small businesses operate in a DOD environment? My name is Nikki Morris. I'm a program engagement manager for Soft Tax Solutions LLC at the Georgia Cyber Center. I'm here today to introduce today's guest speaker for this workshop. But first, I would like to thank today's sponsor for this small business workshop, Phase 2. We greatly appreciate all your support. I would also like to thank the FCS Small Greater Business Greater Augusta Area for their support of today's chapter, I mean, to, for the support of today's topic. The United States faces unprecedented national security and economic challenges. Strategic competitors seek to displace the United States military as the world's preeminent force. The COVID-19 pandemic and impacts from climate change have exposed fragility in critical supply chains, and consolidation in the defense marketplace has undermined the competition and innovation needed to provide the best systems, technologies, services, and products to support the warfighter. How can the Department of Defense expand and strengthen relationships with small businesses and better leverage their capabilities to help solve the department's complex challenges? Today's guest speaker, Dr. Jacqueline Charles, serves as an associate director in the Department of Defense's Office of Small Business Programs. She leads and advises leadership on efforts associated with small business policy, subcontracting, and workforce development. Prior to joining DOD OSVP, Dr. Charles served as a product support manager in the Combat Data Systems Program Office within the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter Program. Dr. Charles advised on logistics policies, she led efforts to sustain various software and hardware tools that Combat Data Systems provides to its operational units that are responsible for developing combat mission data files with the latest capabilities for the F-35. She also held other key leadership roles in her 26-year career in support of various DOD acquisition and sustainment programs. Dr. Charles earned her PhD in education with a specialization in leadership in higher education and an MBA with specialization in global operations and supply chain management from Capella University. She is also a member of the Defense Acquisition Corps. I would like to request that we hold all questions until after the presentation and all questions are related to the presentation only. Please welcome Dr. Jacqueline Charles. <clears throat> Good morning. Thank you for that kind introduction, Ms. Morris. As someone who has spent over 26 years in the federal government with a deep passion for supporting our warfighters and advancing small business opportunities in the defense, I'm very happy to be here to talk about the department's small business strategy with you today. The DOD small business strategy is not just a framework, it's a call to action. Over the past decade, the number of small businesses in the defense industrial base has decreased by more than 40%. If this trend continues, it will, it will result in fewer innovative concepts, diminished capabilities, lower quality of service, and higher acquisition cost. We published this strategy in January 2023, focused on promoting a strong small business industrial base, reducing barriers to entry, increasing set-aside competitions, maximizing strategic partnerships, and leveraging programs to scale the industrial base. So let's dive in. Small businesses are the engine of our economy and the foundation of our industrial base. Their agility, innovation, specialized knowledge propel us forward in a time where rapid change is the norm and the stakes are greater than ever. Our mission is very clear, to harness the power of these small but mighty enterprises, to remove barriers that hinder their contributions, and to ensure that the full spectrum 
of American ingenuity is brought to bear in support of our warfighters. The strategy is not just a plan. It's a commitment to a future where every small business has the opportunity to play a vital role in securing our nation's defense. So we strive to maximize the contributions of small businesses in the DOD acquisitions, demonstrating that their increased participation supports DOD priorities and protects the warfighter. By backing acquisition and sustainment initiatives through policy, data analytics, workforce development, and industry outreach, we ensure support for our efforts. We provide leadership and guidance and, excuse me, governments to the military departments and defense agencies to meet the needs of our nation's service members. Our goal is to create opportunities for small businesses to directly support the national defense strategy, ensuring they remain responsive, resilient, secure, and diversified. Our small business strategy aims to harness the full potential of small companies through three key strategic objectives. The first is implementing a unified management approach for small business programs and activities. The second is ensuring these activities align with national security priorities. And the third being strengthening the department's engagement and support of small businesses. In the following slides, I'll provide some highlights for each of these objectives. So for the first objective, our workforce and small business programs are distributed across the military departments, defense agencies, and DOD components. Unfortunately, this distribution often leads to confusion for small businesses trying to understand what the entry points are, um, how our programs are connected, how they can um, utilize our various small business programs to mature their capabilities from prototype to full-scale integration and also how to diversify uh, the goods and services that they provide to the department. To address these issues, the department has established the DOD Small Business Integration Group, which is led by Director of the Office of Small Business Programs, Mr. Farouk Mita. This group focuses on reducing small business barriers entry into the defense marketplace and also aligning synergies uh, between our small business programs and activities across the departments with representatives, with representatives from the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition Sustainment and Research and Engineering, as well as the SB directors from the various DOD components. In collaboration with the Defense Acquisition University, we have established a small business professional credential back in 2021. Now this credential program equips small business professionals with knowledge to engage early on in the acquisition process, understand key legislation and policies, and master market research and subcontracting con uh, concepts. This empowers them to advise acquisition teams, address subcontracting, um, excuse me, assess subcontracting plans, and guide small companies in becoming prime contractors and subcontractors within the defense sector. We're actively updating our DAU courses with the latest information on our small business programs, and this will ensure that small business professionals can maximize opportunities for small businesses participating in DOD acquisitions and programs. Finally, we're revamping our website, which is business.defense.gov, to become a one-stop shop for small businesses. This site, this, this improved site, will offer enhanced resources, make it easier to navigate the various DOD offices, access program information, and find acquisition uh, forecasting tool sets. We're also exploring ways that we can help connect uh, small businesses with end users and decision makers within a department. The second objective focuses on the importance of small business activities uh, being aligned to the national security priorities. The department needs a strong and growing industrial base, and that's inclusive of a small business ecosystem that delivers a broad range of high quality 
technically ready and diverse capabilities to accomplish this objective and ensure the department has the smallest ecosystem that it needs. We are strengthening and expanding our tech, technical, uh, excuse me, technology and manufacturing small business um, initiative, such as the Rapid Integrated Scalable Enterprise, which is known as RISE program. Um, for others, it, it was also called RIF, if anyone remembers that. Now, this program leans on providing extensive expertise in both the research and acquisition realm for the sake of small companies and cutting edge technology. WISE can work with small companies to help them rapidly, I'll say, rapidly become inserted into acquisition programs that meet specific defense needs. We are also utilizing data tools to ensure small businesses' capabilities are understood through a redeployment of the Market Research Center of Excellence, Excellence which is known as MARCO. Now, MARCO is a market intelligence tool with the platform of performance management and market research capabilities to identify small businesses to increase competition and set asides. Lastly, we're ensuring that small business professionals are involved early on in the acquisition strategy development process to better align them with technologies to meet mission requirements. Now, this is being driven by policies such as the small business participation on multiple war contracts and achieving small business goals through category management. These policies help guide component agencies to, help, uh, excuse me, to enhance small business opportunities and multiple award contract strategies and achieve goals through category management to ensure a department-wide focus on small business participation in the acquisition process. Now, last but not least, this is the third objective. Uh, the third objective is to strengthen the department's engagement and support of small businesses. This is critical with engagements with acquisition leadership to emphasize the importance of capabilities that small businesses can bring to bear in support of our defense mission. Um, also, it's very critical in educating our small businesses on our policies and programs and also informing on cyber threat deterrence, IP infringement, foreign ownership, control or influence, also known as FOCI, that will aid in reducing supply chain vulnerabilities. To meet this objective, we are improving, uh, we're, excuse me, we're providing improved outreach and information on procurement opportunities through the Apex Accelerators to small businesses. We're also utilizing Project Spectrum to provide cybersecurity training and other resources to small businesses. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with Project Spectrum, it's a platform designed to equip companies, institutions, and organizations with essential cybersecurity information, resources, tools, and training. Its purpose is to enhance cybersecurity readiness, resilience, and compliance, and compliance for small and medium-sized companies, as well as federal manufacturing supply chain, all at no cost. And we're also developing industry, uh, excuse me, industry training uh, that will be delivered through the Apex Accelerators to help small businesses understand the risk of foci and to equip them with strategies to counter these threats. Additionally, we're convening a working group to explore further measures to assist small businesses in mitigating investment risks conducting due diligence, and creating standardized approaches to assess risk and leverage domestic capital. So the department has three types of programs that provide small business support. The first is focused on participation, the third is technology development and assistance, and the third is outreach. The department leverages programs such as the DOD Mentor Protege Program, Apex Accelerators, and the WISE Program to provide small businesses uh, developmental and technical, technical assistance to them while also helping them to bridge the valley of death between prototype and production. 
So with the DOD mentor, mentor protege program, that helps um, or actually assist eligible small businesses in gaining a stronger foothold in the defense industrial base by pairing them with a larger, more experienced prime contractor. This partnership helps them um, or to say help small businesses who are very unfamiliar with the uh, federal procurement process to help um, to help them develop that expertise that's needed for them to compete independently for prime, for prime contracts. Now Congress did uh, permanently codify this program in the FY23 NDAA after it's been a successful pilot for over 30 years. Now, over the past five years, the DOD Mentor, uh, Mentor Protege Program has successfully enabled more than 190 small businesses to carve out specialized roles in, and to be integrated into the military supply chain. The Apex Accelerators. Now, last year, a major transition occurred where the Procurement Technical Assistance Program, which is known as PTAP, and its associated centers move from the Defense Logistics Agency to the Office on the Under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition Sustainment to be managed by our office. When we took over this program, we rebranded it to the Apex Accelerators. And they provide support and expertise to small companies that pursue and perform contracts under the Department of Defense, other federal agencies, state and local governments, and with government uh, prime contractors. Uh, counselors that are embedded in these Apex accelerators help companies to complete registration, uh, the registration process, uh, to really get them procurement ready through SAM.gov, uh, to help them understand or find government agencies that um, provide or actually need their products and services. They also help with the solicitation process. And so ultimately those counselors work to position them to be successful in finding and competing for those government opportunities. I would say overall this particular alignment has enabled the department to better utilize those 97 APEX accelerators uh, to support finding and helping potential new entrants into the defense industrial base. The NN Center Program. So this program focuses on encouraging prime contractors to subcontract with Native American um, organizations by providing a 5% incentive to DOD primes on contracts greater than half a million dollars. This program helps to increase Native representation in the defense industrial base, expands opportunities for Native-owned small companies, and serves as a catalyst in diversifying the defense sector. Now from FY15 to FY23, our office has provided over $190 million in incentive payments to prime contractors and increased native-owned subcontracting performance by $3.8 billion. That's a huge return on investment. So for industrial um, cybersecurity, so the focus of this particular area is to improve cybersecurity readiness, resilience, and compliance for small and medium-sized companies and the manufacturing supply chain. New entrants in the defense industrial base uh, really need to be ready um, to assume a cybersecurity posture that will protect their data as well as the government from malicious actors. But we do understand this poses a problem for them. It is a burden. So therefore, you know, at no cost to them, we do provide cyber um, compliance training through Project Spectrum. Um, we also provide cyber readiness, checks and risk assessments and assessments analysis, and other guidance to comply with DOD cyber requirements. To date, we have helped over 8,000 businesses strengthen their cybersecurity and enable them to work on government contracts. Now lastly, uh, we do understand how difficult it is for small companies to move from the prototype stage to procurement process within a department. As stated, early, as stated earlier, RISE, the RISE program, seeks to build, that, um, to build a bridge over the valley of depth issue that still remains today and leans on extensive expertise, expertise between research and acquisition for the small companies and cutting edge technology. RISE can work with small companies to help them become rapidly inserted into acquisition programs that meet those specific needs.
So in addition to our programs, we do have our own support functions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for policy subcontracting workforce development, as a department, we promote policies that support new entrants in, in the defense marketplace as primes or subcontractors, and we ensure small professionals are trained and equipped to maximize opportunities for small companies to participate in DOD acquisitions and programs. We provide guidance on small business programs, authorities, policies and regulations that ensure, and we also really ensure that we insert um, small business equities into those larger defense policies. Now, over the last few years, we have worked uh, with interagency partners on two important changes to category management and the implementation of the rule of two to create more opportunities for small companies on multiple work contracts. <coughs> Through these efforts, it ensures that small companies are considered early on um, in the acquisition process, increasing set aside for small companies, and leveraging new contract vehicles, including on ramps, so companies can compete after war to get on those particular multi award contracts. Industry engagement. So this um, area here, this functional area, provides cross-cutting uh, partnerships with industry, um, external um, digital and communication strategies, as well as promoting events for small companies interested in doing business with the department. Some of their other um, key functional areas is communicating our OSBP uh, strategic goals and program opportunities to industry, as well as strategic and programmatic insight to our OSBP leadership on industry trends and issues. Now lastly, uh, small business risk and analysis and foci, those two pretty much go hand in hand. For small business risk analysis, um, that acts as an overarching umbrella uh, that enables small companies to understand and mitigate risks that come with participating in the defense industrial base um, by providing them with educational resources and tools. Now, FOCI focuses on educating small companies on how to identify, avoid, and mitigate FOCI risks. It's very important because small businesses uh, that work within defense industrial base have become key targets um, you know, for our adversaries that are seeking to um, insert influence on the U.S. defense sector uh, through FOCI. So it's very important that we equip them so that they, with the knowledge so that they can understand how to properly identify and mitigate these risks. So this is how you connect to our office. Um, again, our website is business.defense.gov. We do have an events calendar on our website that pro pro provides information on training opportunities as well as upcoming industry engagements. We are also on various uh, social media platforms that you can connect and follow us on. And you can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter, which is the DOD OSBP uh, excuse me, Bulletin Plus Digest. And if you have a question, um, you can always use our email address. Um, it's osd.business.defense at mail.mail, and we'll be happy to assist you. So in closing, um, I just want to say that small businesses play a vital role in being essential partners in our mission to protect and promote the interests of the United States. We should look beyond our conventional limitations to fully unlock their potential um, within these um, particular areas. In doing so, we will ensure that small businesses continue to thrive in a changing marketplace, securing both their success and the security of our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Charles. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Charles? Right there. Do you need this microphone? I can talk loudly. Okay. That's being right. recorded. Dr. Charles, thanks for that. Um, I'm curious, can you go a little bit into the weeds about how RISE exactly works with small businesses to align them with acquisition programs? What are the specifics? So with that one, um, if you want deep dive information, I will want to refer you to that program manager. His name is Mr. Dave Basigo. Um, let me get your card and let me do that connection and he will take all the time <laughs> to go deep dive into that particular program with you. 
gentleman. Mm -hmm. uh, This, I'm sorry, can you? Uh, sorry. Is the uh, industrial cybersecurity area, you mentioned the help with uh, small businesses assessments for um, cybersecurity, is that going to also encompass CMMC? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So, so Taylor, I'll have a question. Or, so, spit out the question you just asked. If companies want to become uh, CMMC, Level one, I guess two. There's a lot of expenditures from companies. Uh, a lot of it costs a lot. Is that something that the government assists with, or how? How? What? What does that look like? So through Project Spectrum, they do. Well, we do have to touch on. Um, sorry, can you hear me? Um, so we do, through Project Spectrum, we do touch on those requirements. Um, but to kind of deep dive into what that looks like, I will have to refer you to the program manager. Um, his name is Derek Davis. Um, right now he's in San Diego, but I will put you in contact with him and he'll go into that a little bit further with you. Because um, I'm, I'm actually a resident of a chapter um, for ASEA, mm -hmm. and that question comes up a lot. I'm sure, yes. I'm, like, I'm really not sure, but I would like to Absolutely. And maybe at the next event we can get uh, Mr. Davis to come out here and talk about that, Project Spectrum and the CMC requirement. Okay. All right. And I have another question. Okay. Sorry. I'm not monopolizing you on the phone. Uh, on uh, mentor protege, we, we've been in the program once, uh, TM3 Solutions, and they, they, we got an unfair award uh, with uh, NGA and Another prime course perspective. Can you enter the program again? Are you from the DOD side, or does it have to go to SGA? Hmm. You say you're already in the program. On the DOD. On the DOD same side. So are you asking, can you just go to the SBAs and do a joint venture, or? Well, I'm actually wondering if you can go into the uh, DOD Twice. program. Now, I know they're about to stand up another pilot program, and they, that may be your way to do it a second time, but I'll refer you to Casey Diaz to talk more about that requirement. All right. Because okay. that's brand new. I think that just came out of the NDAA. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, again, thanks, uh, Doctor. I uh, appreciate you spending the time here. One of the slides, and I wrote it down, it, it, had, it listed barriers. And the barriers that were on the slide was consolidating and bundling of contracts, lack of sufficient on-ramp opportunities for the GWACs, and uh, restrictive past performance requirements. Uh, as a small business, we've uh, endured some lessons on all three of those barriers. And I guess, uh, do you have any specific examples of where uh, the Office of the Small Business Programs have specifically gone after removing those type of barriers? What would those examples be? So two things I'll do. Um, we have issued policies from 20, in 2023 and 2024 to address those um, efforts. I want to give you copies of, the, of those policies that you can see how we're addressing that. And that will offer, I mean, it will help the contracting officers, I'll say, be a little bit more flexible in making sure that small business interests are being accounted for. So I want to give you two copies of those um, policies and let me know if you have any questions. My name is on there. Okay, yeah, I, I really appreciate that because, I mean, I, again, like any small business, we've learned our lessons and, and, and some of the policies are clearly designed to get there. Um, in, in particular, the, the, the ability to list out subcontract work as past performance has been very beneficial, mm -hmm. but sometimes in the way that that past performance is, is being categorized is still, there, there's still probably in my opinion some some gaps and so i'd be interested in, in those policy changes so i could review them and make sure that we're doing what you know we're taking advantage of those opportunities absolutely thank you mm -hmm.
I meant rushing with a G. Um, <coughs> so I'm, I'm curious to learn, are there any open avenues within OSBP where industry can come and engage with you in terms of how you're putting together your policy thoughts? In other words, how are you getting your intel from industry? How do you engage in that path? How can we potentially work with OSBP to help formulate the solution side of what we're seeing it resulting in your policies? Oh, yeah. We did um, stamp that small business integration group. That's a perfect opportunity to come hear your voices and see how we can best assess. Now, if I can get your contact information, that'd be great. So Dr. Charles again, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the policy part is very interesting. Mm -hmm. it, are there scenarios, and especially since you mentioned like GWACs, for, and barriers of entry. Like I have a, a long list of barriers of entry. It, are there times where, if it makes sense, you all can look at a scenario and I won't say institute a policy, but advocate or potentially coach or suggest that a contracting officer or acquisition shop if it makes sense, say, hey, here's a policy that, that has been instituted or maybe look at this. Are there scenarios where you'll jump in like on a case-by-case -case basis? Yeah. There are. Okay. Yeah. Who, who will we reach out to in that case? Me. Oh. <laughs> you'll definitely reach I'm out so to me. I'm so glad I came here. <laughs> because, um. yeah, small businesses, we live through this on a daily basis. Uh, and because of my, like, I'm in a small business, mm -hmm. right? And I'm advocating at the same time. Uh, it just becomes a very unique set of challenges, right? Um, so yeah, I would love to have those conversations. And also, if you do need feedback from industry, okay. You, you have my number, too, yes. when we meet. So absolutely. thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. And what I'll do, I'll provide you a copy of those recent policies, too. And what you'll see is a joint effort. It's Mr. Fugmita and John Tenaglia both putting out policies. Because when you kind of look at both, we don't have jurisdiction over contracting officers. John does. But it's a unified, it's a joint effort that we're doing. But yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Charles, let me add on to that. So. Uh, Attending these forums, reaching out to you are great opportunities uh, to get clarification on those policies. Um, is there a process where, uh, at your level or your organization, inform those offices that are executing those policies to ensure that there's not a misinterpretation of your guidance? Hmm. Um, Educating them, basically. So I'll, I'll say this, with our website that was on the previous slide, we get all kinds of information through there. Um, so that's definitely an opportunity. But also on our website, it provides all um, information on leadership. I'm on there as well. So it's really just reaching out so that we can understand how we can help you. But with the caveat too that, you know, from an OSD perspective, we push policy. If it's something more specific to an agency, we gotta get them, we have a conversation with them in order to um, address any issues that, that may be out there. But yeah, there is a way. You just gotta reach out. Thanks. Yeah, I was that guy who always got the report card, talks too much in class. <laughs> um, at the top of the session, you mentioned um, a platform you were using to do some discovery tech. Um, Is it Marco? I'm Marco? trying to remember. It was, a, it was a platform that you were doing to do a little bit of tech scouting, I think, about different companies and small companies in, in particular. And I was curious as to whether you could um, elaborate on that a little bit more, in other words, are there a, is there a manner in which a small business could seek out and voluntarily enter its information? Those kind of capture. 
techniques yeah. and so forth? So this, when we do redeployment, um, it is available right now, but we want to redeployment where it's going to really help our acquisition workforce find those companies. And mind you, we're pulling from various resources already, SAM.gov, sure. FPPDS, and things of that particular nature. But since we're still in the development process, if you have some input, uh, we're more than welcome to hear that because we do want to find the right people. Tony, do I have input? Oh, he stopped out. Do I ever have input? Um, <laughs> so, 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 yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> Um, the other thing I wanted to ask about is um, if you could do a report card on Apex accelerators a year out now, how would you substantiate performance? Where do you see it in terms of its execution and so forth? It was a new rollout just a year ago. Can you give us a snapshot or offer your um, Chatham House rules-based <laughs> kind of in uh, in insight onto how the program's going? Thank you. I honestly, I think with the rebranding, and not to say they weren't doing the same at first when they were named, known as PTAS, but they're doing a great job. You know, what I'm seeing more of is that at, at any type of industry engagement, they're there. They're on site. Wherever state that we're in, we bring them to the table to help. So I would put them as an A. That's me personally, if, as far as grading. I'm just seeing more information put out there. And I think it's really based on the new leadership that's behind that. That's Mr. Mita, and we have a Khalil Mack as a director. They're very good. I, I've, mm -hmm. already, I've seen a change um, from when DLA had P Tech than where it is right now. And uh, for our chapter, I, I, I think I mentioned it to you when we were talking earlier, every, before every event, we have a small business event also. Mm -hmm. and, and Apex is working with us uh, religiously yes. on messaging and everything and actually bringing resources. So uh, it, I, I'd give an A too on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how I like to think of them is that they're the front door to our organization. You know, we get a lot of emails on, you know, hey, can you look at my capability statement? We, you know, funnel yeah. that to the APES accelerators. They get the procurement ready. Now, that's great it could, because it really prepares small businesses before they start to get to that oh, yeah. point where they're in front of contracting officers or program managers. Yep. You want to get that out the way beforehand. Exactly. This is just a plug for you guys who are not FCS small business members. It's really important. And we're also going to be doing outreach more so that we can bring a, a, a Dr. Charles to your chapters. So that's really important. But the other reason I'm trying to drag this on is you got 10 minutes until we have a, we get our credits, right? And you know, for, um, for your attendance. So, that's the other thing is, if this is something you guys really love, those kind of, and we've had two sessions, this is the time you guys need to scan, you need to give us feedback, because more conferences like this, when you're going to Alamo, ACE down in San Antonio, or even FCA West, those are things that are really important so that we can let the industry know and government people how important their, their voice is at this point. Anybody else? I do have a question. Um, just kind of adding on to Marcus's question earlier about the services and agencies and what OSBP's relationship is with those services and ag agencies. If you have any examples, that would be great. Yeah, and I hate to sound repetitive, but I just have to keep emphasizing uh, the new policies that we have out there. Um, you know, as far as you know, our relationship is positive. I, I think if, if no one worked in OSD before, they just wouldn't know the importance of getting that buy-in and working in a collaborative manner. Because A, everyone's watching what the Pentagon puts out, and two, those policies that are pushed out impacts the other agencies. And we definitely don't want to put something out there where they can't even meet that requirement. So what I have personally have done, I bring the right people to the table, and I'm like, let's have a conversation. And you know, they review the policies, when it's all good to go, that goes to leadership. And that's what um, I have personally have done to build those positive relationships, not only just within OSD, but with the other agencies as well. Are those new policies on the website? Yeah, it's on our website. <laughs> 
Great, I get to ask another question. I know we talked a lot about the APEX program and I believe it was the, it used to be the P-TAX. What, what, what prompted that change? I mean, we, we know it, they get a great score now, but what was the reason for the change in the first place? So it was a directive, and I'll have to go back and kind of pinpoint was it from the NDAA, probably was. But that's where it all began, you know, to shift that from the Defense Logistics Agency um, over to the um, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for acquisition statement to be managed by our office. So that's what prompted it. And honestly, I think it's been a great move. I mean, I've just been seeing so much positive energy behind that. Most of the stuff was, that was being procured was hardware. It was widgets. It was whatever. So it would make sense to be in that logistics chain, right? Now, it's almost 80% services or software or something you can't touch or put in your pocket. So it makes, I think, a bit more sense under under OSD. So that I was going to add on to that. Um, the other question I had was, can you kind of contrast the role that OSBP has, and, and really even at the service levels too, because you have counterparts at all the services, against that which the SBA is supposed to do. Because I think especially, not so much all small businesses, but new small businesses walk into this acronym soup and go, oh, I think I'm, you know, maybe I should just cut grass for a living. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I would say when it comes to OSD and SBA small business programs, I would say all those socioeconomics, WASB, VOSB, you name it, that's managed by SBA. When it comes to the DOD incentive program, mentor protege, APEX, WISE, that's us. We own that. So I know it's not clear we're going to do better in, in doing that. And when we do get inquiries in, we do have to make that extension. And when, you know, and we do put them in the right um, lane to, to contact whoever at the SBA. But when it comes to social economic pro programs, that's the SBA's ownership. Okay, I'll jump in again too. So I'm tracking that uh, this strategy has been out since January of 2023. Um, what have you learned since it's been out that required some modification or updates, if there are any? Um, well, since I, I mean, we've had an earlier version out there, but with this one in particular, um, and also plus with the new staff in that office, a lot of good positive energy are behind the implementation process with this strategy. We, we want to get after making things better, you know, for the small businesses, reducing those um, barriers. So I would say since, because I've only been in this office since maybe, what, 2022, 2023 at the latest, it's a new energy. I, I'm a part of that new energy because I want to get it done. So that's just some feedback. We haven't had to do any type of modifications right now, but it's just we got the right people in place to make things happen. Ben. I think one of the challenges is, and I mean, I'm not sure if this complaint, if it would be a categorized complaint, but one of the challenges that, that, you know, on the barriers, one of the things that's on your slide, your list is that, you know, the inability to, to, to get onto the GWAX, you know, because, you know, the windows to get on them are fairly infrequent. Well, when the new GWACs come out, whether it's, you know, Oasis, Polaris, uh, or the smattering of other ones that the small business community is trying to get after, when those are delayed in perpetuity, you know, then, then, then you, the, the barrier to entry is just increased. So even if, the, if you're not going to uh, reduce the timeline between the being able to on-ramp then if there was a concerted effort to really figure out how to not have these new GWACs be delayed so long that it, you know, it takes the small businesses are waiting to get on those new vehicles, uh, you know, that they, they, they don't have anywhere to go until they get on those new vehicles and those delays really impact. So I don't know from a from an OSBP perspective, because something obviously that's coming out of GSA or what have you, that that's kind of the policy connection that I think needs to be made is how do you reduce all those 
delays, some of which are probably generated by industry, but there's a lot that is government generated. And that would be my comment. Yeah, and honestly, I, this is the first time I'm hearing that that is an issue. So I would love to talk to you afterwards and get more insight, and then we can collaborate with GSA to figure out what the issue is. Yeah, because I'm sure that anybody in here that has been waiting for, I mean, well, Oasis Plus like, came out like last week, but that's been a year plus in the making in Polaris is, I mean, I, 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 probably about two years. I mean, I mean it's, it's in the small business community is, any business that has started in the last, let's just say, five years, mm -hmm. you haven't had any other ability to really get on to anything like ITES or, an o or the old Oasis or anything like that. So you're waiting for these new GWACs, and you take a strategy as a small business to go after those, mm -hmm. and then you wait and wait and wait. Uh, and in some cases, you wait for a bad outcome, but that's a, that's a whole different discussion. You know? Okay. It, just one observation, just for myself, going through, going to this forum as well as AUSA. At AUSA, uh, OSBP has a large presence at that that uh, conference. I would recommend that maybe at the national level, we may, we may need to add to our venue an opportunity for a standing opportunity for OSBP to come down and to engage with small businesses to have these conversations. Oh yeah, let's have a round table discussion. We yes. have those all the time. Yeah, so, you know, I agree with you on this because, uh, and, and, and I think because of a number of reasons, I, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this, maybe. Uh, I think people are intimidated by the possibility of dealing with the Pentagon. I, I'm not, because I call when I need to, put it like that. But like, you all just had the event in Detroit. I believe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you ever get a chance to go to any of their shows, uh, please attend them. You, you would never, you, the value of them are, is just incredible. So whenever you all do have an event, and it's always on your website, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just invaluable resource. I, the relationships that I've had with your department have just really given us you know, so much insight, direction, uh, pointed us to the right people. So it's, when used correctly, it's a valuable resource. But make sure you have your, your act together before you go there. Don't, you know, you don't wanna have to send somebody, somebody back to Apex, right? Have all that taken care of before you reach out and then um, you all can work your magic at that point. Yeah. yeah. Thanks again. We have time for one last quick question. Wait. You're, 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 close, you're, close, no, close it out. I'm going to have a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick. All right. Let's, let's pivot and, and look at the workforce development side of your title if we could. Um, so currently, as far as I know, the biggest kind of conduit for shifting workforce development initiatives from DOD to the to the schools, let's say, and, and K through 12 set and, and even into college, a lot of that happens through the partnership intermediary uh, awardees, PIAs like uh, Wright Brothers Institute, like the Griffiths Institute, uh, Central Florida Tech Grove, and, and so forth, where they work with the local uh, or regional schools and universities as well as K through 12s to kind of help generate those types of courses that DOD uh, clientele stakeholders need downstream. Um, how does OSBP fit into that realm, number one? Number two, how does small business help feed that as well? Hmm. And that should get us to our 1110. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let me kind of tailor what I do. Um, so with workforce development, my target audience is small business professionals. So it's really educating them so they can better assist small companies. So. That's interesting. I'd like to talk with you more about that angle. Um, that may be something where we may be using just another area in our office to tackle. But that's my focal area is government employees, small professionals, getting them equipped to help out. I thought you were going to talk longer than that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you again.